This is my house. My parents helped build it. Now we don't get wet when it rains. I don't get too hot or too cold inside. And I don't have to worry when the winds blow. This is my house. This is my house. This is my house. This is my house. My house. My house. I can play with my sister. I can play with my brother. I can play with my mother, my father. I can study. I can be safe with my family. This is my house. Visit Habitat.org to find out how you can help more families like mine have a safe, decent place to call home. It's an honor to welcome the CEO of Habitat for Humanity and the author of a brand new book. It's called Our Better Angels, Seven Simple Virtues That'll Change Your Life in the World. Please meet Jonathan Reckford. Jonathan, welcome. Thank you, Mike. Delighted to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you. And after the insanity of those Christmas gifts, you probably wondered if you'd come to the right place. <laughs> but indeed, you have. Habitat has made a huge difference in so many people's lives. What's unique about Habitat? Because there are other organizations that help people, but Habitat puts them in homes. I think the not so secret beauty of Habitat is the way that we don't just build homes, we build community. And one of the great myths of Habitat is that we give away the houses. And I think the process has been so powerful. Families actually put in hundreds of hours of sweat equity. They take classes in home maintenance and financial management, and then they take out an affordable mortgage with Habitat, and as they make their payments, they're helping the next family have their chance to have a decent home. And volunteers come around and build with the families. And in that process, everyone has something to give and everyone has something to gain. And I think that's, uh, when people are out on the build site, they have a sense of community that sometimes is too rare in our world today. You know, I think one of the things that you do and do so beautifully, and maybe it's misunderstood, it, it isn't just, here's a house, here are the keys, I hope you take care of it, but if you don't, there's no penalty. This actually becomes their home, but they have skin in the game. They help work on it, and then they do have a responsibility to learn how to take care of it. So it's a long-term commitment and uh, connection to Habitat. It is, and I think what's so powerful is one of the biggest challenges if you don't have a lot of income is how do you build an asset? And for many families, the chance to own a home becomes an intergenerational asset as well as a safe place to live. And I think that, um, you know, for a home, so many of us take it for granted. We grew up in decent housing. If you met anyone that didn't, they know, but we know it's certainly not the only need, but in some ways it really is that foundation. And children that have decent housing stay healthier, do better in school, then they're really prepared to be able to lift themselves up. They get a real piece of the American dream. And one of the people that's probably brought most attention to Habitat is former President Jimmy Carter. A lot of people think he is a part of Habitat, that he runs the organization, but he's been a volunteer all these years. The truth is, uh, we were started in 1976, but the world found out about Habitat in 1984 when President and Mrs. Carter got on a bus from Plains, Georgia, drove up to New York City, slept in a church basement, and rehabbed a tenement building on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And no one had ever seen a, a former president of the United States behave that way. And I think his now 35 years of building with us has had, it's really hard to measure the impact of, of their involvement. And as he said over and over again, Habitat for Humanity is the best way he knows to put his Christian faith into action in a practical and tangible way. And that he always says he gets more out of it than anything he's able to give. Let's talk about uh, our better angels, because yeah. that's uh, what you've written about here. It kind of helps people understand maybe the, the heart behind Habitat and, and what it is that drives the volunteers. So who are our better angels? You know, I think the heart of this book are, is the recognition that our better angels are everyday heroes in communities all around the world who look out and say, we can do better. And it's really a book full of stories of local people who have transformed not only their own lives, but their communities in the process. And I think um, in a world where it's easy to see a lot of division and, uh, and anger and upset, um, I'm very optimistic when I see these families who are community by community really creating transformation. And my hope is when people read the book, they'll realize, hey, I can go do something and be part of changing my community. You talk about in the book seven very vital uh, virtues. Tell me about some of those that that you think make a difference in people's lives? It was my goal in creating that this really would be a platform to, to tell stories and encourage people, not just for Habitat, but to, to improve their communities, but didn't want to have uh, any challenges. If I can share just one story that's an example sure. of, of what we created. Um, I think my favorite story might be my friend Boris, who is in this book. And Boris 
Um, it's a story that, that could happen too often in our community. Grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, lived in a community called The Hole. And mm. you can imagine what kind of community that was. Mm. 25 murders in, uh, in three years there in his neighborhood, gunshots. Uh, they had no indoor plumbing, uh, scary place to live. And Boris was acting out, failed first grade, was one of those children that could have been written off. And when he was 11, everything changed. His mom qualified to buy a habitat for a house. Mm. They moved into Optimist Park. I love that imagery. Oh, from the whole to Optimist Park. Oh, love that. Boris turned out to be a smart kid. Yeah. Ends up doing well in school, gets a full scholarship to Davidson, gets an MBA, successful banking career. He is now serving on the International Board of Habitat, as far as I know, the first Habitat child uh, to Damn. serve on our board, and making the world better. And I just think, how many more Borises are out there who just need that, that hand up to get a chance to grow into all that God intends for them? I think Habitat is one of the greatest organizations. I say that in part. My wife volunteers with Habitat every year, Indeed. was on the international board for a number of years. Uh, she always comes back energized from the project. So it's not only that it's doing something for the people who end up receiving the homes. It does something for the volunteers, the people that you depend upon to sign up and say, I'll go and pay my own expenses to go and travel and help build a house. Well, we love Janet, and I have literally built around the world with her over the years, yeah. and it is, um, but I think it's so true, I'm always amazed. People will, after working all day, um, come and thank me. One of my favorite stories in the book is from my first build with President Carter in India, and we're in rural India, and these Indian CEOs come out, and it's inconceivable to them that they would go do manual labor, and they're assuming they're coming just for a photo op, and then <laughs> President Carter is out there, and then, they get hooked. And yeah. those same people now are champions and growing the program in India because they realize um, how powerful it is to be in relationship and to see, uh, see that transformation take place. What a beautiful story, beautiful story. You know, it's Christmas time. You may not know what to get people. Maybe make a contribution to Habitat uh, as a Christmas gift in the name or in honor of someone that you don't know what to get for. Uh, you can order uh, this wonderful book at Habitat for Humanity. Dot org. It's uh, the book, Our Better Angels, Seven Simple Virtues That'll Change Your Life in the World. As we say, all the proceeds go to Habitat. Follow Jonathan Reckford on Twitter, at Jay Reckford.